and fellow fitness professionals. I'm Steve Cotter from IKFF and Kettlebell University. Today I decided to create this little video as a kind reminder to all fitness professionals around the world. In my experience, uh, our first and most important role is in promoting high quality movement or good movement quality. Uh, what prompted me to, to share these uh, insights with you today is I've been seeing a lot of uh, challenges being passed around online among different trainers. And one I've seen in the past few weeks in my news feed is regarding a Z-press, which I've always called the seated press, but it's essentially doing a kettlebell press from a straddle position. And what I've seen has been mostly discouraging because I'm seeing a tremendous amount of sloppiness with people that really ought to know better, um, people that ordinarily are very accomplished fitness professionals, but in the eagerness to have friendly competition, focusing maybe a little bit too much on hoisting the heaviest kettlebell and not nearly enough on the quality of movement. And so this relates to actually all movement, any technique, kettlebell, non-kettlebell, uh, just movement quality in general. There's some certain um, underlying factors that should be present. And so chief among that is we have to pay attention to our base of support and our relative position, our alignment, uh, center of mass as it relates to the base of support. And so for example, if I'm just going like this and I'm taking a kettlebell and I'm pressing it, I'm getting certainly some upper body development, but aside from that, I'm not really giving myself any advantage. And in fact, I'm creating a disadvantage because I'm ingraining faulty movement pattern. Uh, I would never be able to apply this type of strength in the real world if it's not a controlled environment simply because I don't have my base firmly established. So sometimes it's important to, to go back, really look at the quality of the movement, maybe even do the movement with lighter weight, perfect the movement first, then build strength on top of that firm foundation. So here's some important cues to keep in mind. You want to set your base. The, the distance isn't so much of a factor. That's going to depend on your range of motion, but whether you're here or out or a little bit wider, you have to do it well. So you want to first of all dorsiflex the foot. Uh, some folks you'll see them plantar flexing with the toes pointed. That's, that's quite a nice aesthetic. You'll see that more with people with a dancing background where you have that nice uh, aesthetic point. But for athletics, dorsiflexion is going to be more applicable. For example, when you're running, sprinting, you want that dorsiflex position. You're not going to be here. So I'm teaching dorsiflex. We want the knees pointing up. And we want the entire surface to be in contact with the base. So a good cue here is to press the back of your knees into the floor. Okay, so press those knees into the floor so you see that I'm eliminating any gaps. There's no, there's no space here. See, I'm pressing. And now I have that base. I sit upright. So I lift from the roof of my head. That's that midline or core stability. Okay? So from this base, now I can do the technique, set my counterbalance, and keep that base. It makes it much more challenging than just coming here and doing whatever, flailing. Uh, but more importantly is that you're ingraining a proper foundation in your movement. So that's something to consider. Please, trainers, uh, fitness pros, pay attention to the quality of the movement. We want to teach people lifetime uh, lifestyle habits of moving well, not just in your 20s, 30s, 40s, but 50s, 60s, 70s, and beyond. So if you're going to do something, do it well. Thank you very much.